Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for our webinar on theming and branding with App Builder. We have people rolling in. Um, I just clicked start webinar. So we will um, we'll actually start in, in uh, maybe two minutes. I'm going to go or not two minutes, maybe one minute. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Yep. And I want to start my slideshow, swap my displays. All right, so I think we're ready to go today. Um, let me make sure we've got everyone joined in here as well. George, you can see my screen, correct? All right, cool. So, okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go over theming and branding with App Builder and then a little bit more on the design to code side. But if you um, haven't joined us with, with previous uh, webinars like this, we kind of like to get right to the demo. So I'm just going to rifle through a couple slides today. Our special guest is George Abraham. Uh, he is a senior product owner, senior UX architect. If you've been following our design to code story over the last uh, 10 years, George uh, or actually longer now, George uh, was uh, started our Indigo product um, way back when and has been with it all along. Um, so uh, all things about this tooling, he's an expert at, and he's going to walk us through today um, some of the work they did in the last few releases around theming and branding and how that works uh, inside of the product. So we'll look at built-in themes, custom themes, and he's going to show us a little design to code uh, if you're starting from the design side. Uh, you will get a recording after the webinar. You will get the slides after the webinar. So don't worry. Uh, everything will um, be there as well. I have a link here. I will, um, I'll paste these into the chat as George is doing his demo where you can find stuff on the change log blogs, uh, et cetera. So you keep up to date. As with every webinar, I want to highlight uh, the Discord channel. I will paste this link in as well. And Discord is really important because you get the whole product team uh, uh, in, involved with Discord. So right now it looks like there's two, four, six, seven of us on um, at any given time. There could be up to 30 or 40 folks on there. But the idea is this is where you get all of anything you need to know. You have an issue, you have a complaint, you want a feature. Uh, we post things that's happening like the webinar stuff. Um, RG21 yesterday was asking some questions about what we're doing in terms of data and things with Postgres, Firebase, MongoDB, et cetera. And it's just a great way to interact and to get that immediate answer because we're online. So, you know, go ahead and sign up for Discord if you haven't already. I know many of you have um, and continue to check that out. Real quick on the roadmap side, we did ship our beta of Blazor code generation uh, two weeks ago. And uh, it's awesome. Um, by the end of this week, it will be into the production uh, online uh, version of App Builder. So right now it's in the sandbox, which if you're at the last webinar, you got a link for. If you want that link, let me know. But um, we added a bunch of new controls uh, and we're going to continue to add new controls. Also shipped were our digital asset support, Adobe XD, is still in beta, but it's really just because we're waiting on Adobe to approve our plugin. And then a couple big items for early January and maybe in December, but time is running thin with the holidays is our Swagger support and CSS grid support. And then moving forward in terms of the roadmap, lots more controls coming in January, February, and then just more features that will help you build apps faster. So more empty layout templates, more showcase samples, more controls like the chart, um, better data binding. We have a forms builder coming, uh, custom components with UI parts, code gen for React and web components. So the story just keeps getting better and better and better on accelerating your uh, entire app building process. So we're pretty excited about this. So if you're new, App Builder, of course, is 100% cloud-based WYSIWYG. Uh, basically drag and drop. If you think about like VB6, it's that type of experience or... If you use Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD tools like that today to build screens with your design systems, you'll recognize the UI is very similar. Our secret sauce is we deliver production-ready 
entire apps with anything that you design. So all of the code is production ready, testable, put it in uh, GitHub or TFS, maintain it, um, update it through App Builder. Um, so it's a great story and sort of a unique position here in the market. So with that, I am going to stop my share. I'm going to hand it over to George and he's going to do some demos. I will be on the chat in the Q&A. So feel free to um, uh, ask questions uh, through the chat or the Q&A and I will be answering them live uh, as George is doing his uh, demo. So George, uh, take it away. Sounds good. All right. So let's talk about uh, theming in App Builder and how we approach it is from the notion of an application level theming. And it would make sense to you once I explain that, you know, when people think about themes, you know, we get customers asking us, how do I change the color of this button? Uh, but, you know, I have been on countless design meetings where we start with the button and then very quickly you realize that we have to design five different look and feel for the button, one for the hover, one for the pressed, one for active, disabled, name it. And then you scale it up to all the more complex components like um, you know, the username, password, login fields, and then more complex components like grid. Uh, it just doesn't become maintainable. And God forbid, uh, I don't know, our audience members directly. But if you are working with different customers and you're building applications for different consumers who have their own brand and colors to be represented in the app, and if one of them wants a dark theme you know, for their application, it is just not sustainable for large applications to be able to go individually at each uh, component level and have to style it and make sure that all the UI states are actually taken care of. And also, whatever colors you end up coming up with, that actually has the sufficient contrast ratio so that it actually meets accessibility standards. So application level theming is just this one quick fix, which still allows you to express your identity. But at the same time, it makes sure that everything is nice and cohesive right out of the box. And we do that, like if you are signed into App Builder and anytime you create a brand new application, I'm showing you this sign-in dialog, which I created very quickly with the components in our toolbox here. But in the toolbox, we have this notion of concept of themes, right? So out of the box, Indigo uh, App Builder actually ships with uh, preset themes. And, and these preset themes are based on three core themes. One is a material theme. The other one is fluent. And then the third one is like bootstrap. And the way you actually apply a theme is that right now it's saying that this has these two colors and I'll show you what those colors imply. Uh, but if I switch it to material dark, immediately it's skinned. If I switch it to fluent, it's also skinned immediately. But there are other changes which are happening on because you have chose fluent is that you can see how these labels are different. So in the case of material, the hint text was inside that input group. But in the case of Fluent, because the, their design guidelines are expecting this, the labels actually float outside. The checkbox or the switch changes its presentations. The button sizes have changed. So it's not just the fact that the colors are changing. It's also doing a lot more. And of course, switching into a dark mode is just as easy because I just click on it. And we have made sure that it's all cohesive, that when you switch from light to dark, I mean, it doesn't look great on the design canvas because we're showing you the boundaries. But if I preview this application, you'll see that it, it, it'll look a lot cleaner <laughs> without this additional stuff uh, hogging uh, space in there, right? So with that in mind, let me show you what the themes actually look like uh, underneath, right? So if I go to any of these themes here, I, can, I cannot edit the default themes which come with the app, app builder, but I can always duplicate it or create a brand new theme. And when I create a brand new theme, you see the same choice as I was talking about earlier uh, becomes the baseline, right? So you can choose like, do you want your theme to start with material, fluent or bootstrap? And whether you want a light or a dark version of the theme. So say that I want a light version, and then we are allowing you to override what we call the primary and the secondary colors. So even though we are asking you to change these two colors, we are automatically generating a palette which has sufficiently different contrast ratios so that they actually look distinct from one another. And they are also named 
uh, like primary 300, primary 200, just to indicate that it is a grade of the same uh, same color. And if you want to change a completely different color, I would just go in here, pick like a more purplish hue. And you can see as I'm picking these colors, the palette and the sub palette is actually being generated directly. Same thing for my secondary color. I can pick a more, you know, on this aquamarine uh, kind of a color. And then I can go ahead and change the other parameters. So I can choose typography. So right now in App Builder, we have exposed a subset of Google Fonts. But essentially, you can always generate this app in the future and switch out the typography to something else. So in this case, it's defaulting to Titillium uh, Web. But I can go in and say, OK, you know what? I want uh, Nunito Sans or something. And then I can also change the radius on, on all these options. So I can say, I want it a little bit more rounded. I want, I want it a completely pill-shaped. These kind of options are exposed at a global level. And the moment I say my demo theme, I hit save. It doesn't matter how many screens you have in this UI. It would actually take it and skin it for you uh, dynamically. So right now, it's mater material has been applied. The rounding has been applied. So when I preview this particular theme, it take just take a second for the final colors to kick in. But that's how it, it would end up looking. Now, this is a very simple example for me to show you that it's not just the components, like individual component overrides. It's actually everything in this uh, app, which has gotten skinned directly. So if you are worried that, OK, I still want a custom override uh, for my colors, you can totally do that still. So if I select this button, if I look in the properties, you can see that, OK, the background fill is saying it's theme default. Same thing for the fill colors or the foreground colors. And when somebody tries to apply a color, this is another uh, change we made in App Builder, such that everything stays consistent. Uh, doesn't matter how, how, who is working on it. If this is the brand, everybody needs to use it instead of picking colors willy-nilly. The color fill is actually being populated by the theme you have currently selected. So if I change my theme to something else, you'll notice that the, the color fill is actually different. So let me just do that quickly, just so that you can see. So say I pick uh, the Stitilium Dark. It's going to switch on the canvas. And my button is still selected. And then if I open my color picker, you'll see that the primary and the secondary color palettes have changed. That doesn't mean that you cannot still do manual overrides, because you can always go in here, type in whatever color value you need. But you should realize that's a very local override. That means you are taking on the baggage of maintaining this local change as your app evolves uh, across light and dark uh, kind of environments. So. Uh, in I showed you what the custom theme looks like, but now let me show you how it look with a more uh, robust application. This one is a very simple uh, look and feel. So let me just switch over, create a brand new application here, and just pick this theme collaboration app. And this has more pixels uh, to show. Um, so here is a theme, theme collaboration app, and if I switch over to my views, I can see that this is the master view of this particular application, and then I have child views which are being hosted underneath it. And the benefit of working in Indigo Cloud is that this apps, they all belong to what we call a group workspace. And what that means by group workspace is that I can have multiple people invited to work on the very same app. And all the themes you end up creating, so if Jason kind of logs into the same uh, workspace and he goes to custom themes, he doesn't have to recreate this theme. It's already part of this workspace as a shared item. So if I click on it, one click, and this was the theme I, I had just created, it gets applied, the typography, everything gets applied directly. Uh, and then when you are actually sharing this, um, this application, when you are publishing it to GitHub, all this theme information is actually passed along directly into the version of the app you're going to compile. So when you compile the application and run it, guess what? It looks exactly what we have actually defined uh, inside App Builder. Now, with this approach, you can actually go ahead and scale your design uh, as much as you want, and you do not have to reskin anything as you're adding new components. So, for example, now that I have applied this application level theme and I go in and try to add a new button, when I add it, you'll see that that is already styled and colored exactly like your theme is dictating. 
And this really can help speed up the effort that first, you do not have to configure anything on this, this button. I can still go ahead and say, you know what? I do like white fills on, on my buttons. I can just do that. But any other person working on the very same app with you, they, they don't actually ever, do, ever have to revisit you know, what they would need to do in order to make sure everything looks consistent. And since this is driven by material, there are certain spacing and, 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 and sizing considerations, which I already showed you is are taken uh, care of. And similarly, if you want to use Fluent or something else, that is also possible. Now, whatever I'm showing inside the App Builder, we might have limited, uh, it might look like it's limiting, but actually it's providing you a lot of freedom in investing in what you need to do actually create. And one part of it is that you see all these nice little uh, avatars and icons which are available here. Indigo also allows you to, or the App Builder allows you to host all your uh, resources. So in this, in this case, it could be image assets, because if you look at any website or web, web app out there, illustrations actually do reflect a lot of the brand. So in, in, the, in our case, so if I go to indigo.design, So you see every website, when you go there, it has a, a, some illustrations and characters which actually show off what the brand actually looks like. So it's not just the colors, it's also about all these other assets which you need to basically reflect or, or express a brand. And with Indigo Design, in the App Builder, you can go in here and you'll see it right along the themes, we have something called assets, right? And with this assets, you can drop in any kind of a picture format or an SVG file in order to have it available as a workspace resource so that anybody else looking for assets, they don't actually have to hunt for it. So if I go in here, let me find an image, which is an SVG. So this is the Infogistics logo. So I'm just gonna drop it in here if Edge behaves. And then it gets uploaded uh, into my assets library. And then I can use this image anywhere in this app and anyone else, just like themes are shared, assets in a workspace are also shared with any apps you actually end up creating within that particular workspace. So if you want to use this image, I just simply drag and drop, and it'll just show up wherever it's 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 meant to show up uh, in this app builder. Now that I have shown you uh, this asset story, I don't know how many of you do work on design tools. So sometimes for design-led efforts. Uh, People might contract their work or the designers are working in tools like Sketch or XD or Figma. Uh, and the benefit of uh, that approach is that we do have a UI kit, which is part of Indigo Design. And with that UI kit, somebody can create a very similar app inside of a tool like app, app, application um, and a tool like Sketch. Uh, we end up working on so many design tools, it gets confusing. Um, but if there is any design which has been expressed, and this is the same app, which I ended up creating uh, inside of Sketch with the UI kit. Uh, and we have a plugin, which is a companion piece uh, for applications like Sketch or XD. So the indigo.design plugin has a themes component uh, to it. And when you explore the themes component, you'll realize that is exactly the same uh, concept which has been realized inside of App Builder is the same concept which we have shown inside the plugin, such that you can still do the same operations. You can go in here and say, you know, I'm gonna create a brand new theme. I wanna name that theme. I wanna pick uh, my primary colors and secondary colors. And you can see that it's generating the palette just the same way. Let's see a green color. And, and I can change my typography. I can pick a different base font or base typeface. And once I apply it, and I'm not going to do it up the applying this particular theme right now, only because it takes literally 20 seconds for it to actually uh, uh, take effect. But what it's doing, it's doing the same operation. It's going through all the UI kits, making sure that every single component is skinned with the latest colors you have. And I already applied this prior, and this is how Sketch would actually reveal it to me. It's saying that component updates are available. And I go in there, and I can review what changes were made best based on this theme. And you can see that I have this new color coming in for primary and secondary. And if I hit update components, that's it. It actually gets skinned the exact same way I was skinning this application inside of App Builder. 
but the journey doesn't end here. Once I have skinned this application here, I can always go to the plugins. I can say create an app. Let's see if it does that. And let me pick this, this workspace concept I mentioned. So I'm, I'm in a shared workspace with Jason called Customer Success. And it's called Team Collaboration App uh, Themed. I'm just checking my time here. OK. And that, that pretty much is done. So if I go back to uh, App Builder, You see this the, the same app which I just published from Sketch, Team Collaboration App Themed. And you can see the color tile on it. It has the purple and the teal colors in here. And if I hit pre uh, edit, now I can start off for somebody who started off in Sketch uh, and they published into App Builder. And the development team and the developers can actually take that design and then extend it as they, as, as they feel fit. So you can see the, all, the, all the colors are kicking in. All the theme information has come in, the, the typography has come in. And what else has happened is if I look under my themes, you see this, I just named it Blue Steel. I don't know why, but it's called Blue Steel. And if I go in Sketch, uh, if I go back to Sketch here, Plugins, Indigo Design, Themes, it takes a second for it to load. I have too many things running on my machine. So this is the same theme. You see the, the colors, the purple and the teal. It's called blue steel. And then when I go in into App Builder, into App Builder, you'll see that the same blue steel theme is available here. And now I can always edit it and override it uh, to my heart's content, right? So this, it's going the same route. So if it's a custom theme, you can always override it. But we have actually preserved the work which somebody has done in a tool, the design tool preferably, uh, and used our plugin and has published this app into app in, into App Builder. Then we make sure that we don't have to redo any of those, uh, those decisions again inside of uh, App Builder here. The other thing which has happened is I mentioned the, the role of illustrations sometimes, which is important for branding. Uh, when something gets published, from an app like Sketch, what we are actually doing is that all these, these avatar images, which were actually part of the, the design file. So this is something which designers do all the time. They actually embed their artifacts, their, uh, their design expression right inside the application itself. And usually developers have to manually go in and extract each of these assets. But what we have done is along with the theme, because assets are just as important for branding. We are automatically parsing all these assets and we are making it available for you inside this asset library, right? So this is just done with one operation. And if I republish that same app multiple times into the same workspace, we make sure that you're not getting duplicates, right? It's all it's also automatically resolved so that your, your asset toolbox does not blow up with, with redundant duplicate uh, stuff. And then I can still drag and drop like I showed you earlier, like how I added the Infogistics logo. But this Infogistics logo might have already been there. And if I publish it again, it'll just replace it silently without you ever having to, to deal with this. So with this approach, you can create both the custom themes. You can override uh, the, the colors of individual components here. So you can select this button and say, I want a different theme. That's something which we discussed. And since this, this one came in from uh, the, the, the sketch file, sometimes we keep the original value, but I can just go ahead and, and just override it and set it back to primary 500 so that it always stays consistent. That way, when you're switching the themes, if you change your mind up after the fact, it is a, it, it's as I showed you before, it's just a matter of going into to the themes collection and say, give me a different one, and then it just skins it directly. Right. So this this approach makes it really uh, scalable and maintainable. And then finally, I want to end with uh, if you are so inclined to roll your own at, at a very granular level, if I go for IGX theming, I should have had it open. Sorry about that. 
we have very extensive documentation which and also the api showing you exactly how each and every component uh, is actually being themed from a typography elevation you name it it's actually documented uh, in our documentation so if you want to actually do full full control over how much you want to override you can totally do that and with each component we actually talk about theming so if i go into the button example you can see using CSS variables, using theming overrides, all of this is documented. So even if you are just living in the IDE, wanting full control, we tell you how to do that. But it's not worth it, uh, because if you want to really scale your application design effort, uh, it's easier to use an app level theming with these initial uh, hooks into how the entire application can be skinned uh, with one click. That's it, Jason. Any questions which uh, you think we should cover right now? Uh, no, I got them online uh, in the in the chat window. There was just a couple of general questions, nothing on theming. But if anyone has any questions specifically on theming, let us know. If your mind is blown, let us know. If you uh, if you think there should be other features in there, let us know. But that was a great demo, George. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, you joining today to do that. Uh, Shri Raj says, do we have app builder for React? Yeah, we do. It's coming in, I believe the February timeframe, we're gonna release React code generation. Uh, we just shipped Blazor code generation uh, in a beta. Uh, next up is gonna be web components. We're gonna start working on that at the beginning of the year and then React uh, shortly after that. Um, so pretty much by, March, you'll have all the major platforms in terms of uh, uh, code generation from this. But here's my message to everyone. Start using the product now because, George, if you show where the code gen is, it's just going to say React. When, it, when, when React is available, it's just going to say React. So it's not like you have to say, I want to create a React app. Let me do it. No, you just create an app and then you decide to do code generation. Yeah, I knew Jason, you were going to mention this. Uh, uh, and Jason mentions it pretty much in every webinar he does, is that the design surface is actually platform agnostic. We are basically doing web layouts and we are using uh, real components. The choice of what platform you want to target, that can be decided at the point of generation, right? So you do not actually have to wait for the components to be available. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the sandbox environment, which Jason said would be merged into uh, this environment. But whenever I do preview uh, for any particular apps uh, in here, you see that it's right now it's showing Angular. That's why it's showing HTML, TypeScript, and CSS. Uh, but in the version we're going to merge, you will, you'll start seeing a switcher here, which allows you to switch between Blazor and in the future web components React. And when you do that, say that you switch to Blazor, you will see that it'll switch to Razor and SESS, right? It's, it's easier to show you if I had it running. But essentially, the design hasn't changed. The layouts haven't changed. They're still web applications. It's just the language and the markup style, the organization, how the project is organized, that changes, and we take care of that. Yep, I'll show that in a sec as well. Um, and Shriyaj says, whether App Builder is tied to Ignite UI, or can use any other library like Kendo, um, eventually we'll support third-party controls, but, um, not right now. I mean, I don't know why you would want to use Kendo, um, because our grid's way faster and, um, we have way more options in terms of the theming and branding and, uh, just pure performance. But yeah, I mean, I would try out our product first. Uh, Kendo does have more, if you are doing purely react, Kendo does have more react controls, but angular, no way. Um, but in terms of perf, I would I would look at our product. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing beating just using App Builder to design all of your screens. And you can see George here is just like binding to data, setting properties on a grid, and you don't have to like <laughs> you never you don't even really have to know how to write code um, at all because you can just generate screens. It's beautiful. Uh, so yeah, give us a try uh, if you're on uh, on using another product. Um, but that's just pretty amazing, George. Thank you for showing this. Cool. And, and in fact, um, let me go back and share my screen. I'm going to stop your share, George. I'll go back to uh, 
my screen. Yep, I think you can see my screen one share. Cool. So this is the blazer. Uh, this is the sandbox. George mentioned this is all going to be in production this week. But right here, it says blazer or angular. And it's going to say react and web components uh, in Q1. But check this out. If I go to preview, like George was saying, this is um, this is Angular. I'm going to change it over to Blazor by clicking up here, and now it is uh, Razor Pages, right? With C sharp code. Go here. Go to Angular, HTML, TypeScript, CSS. So it's um, it's pretty amazing. Um, data sources today. Now keep in mind, this is a a SaaS based product that you generate code for, and then you're going to continue to work on the code. So any data source that you want to use um, uh, needs to be web available. And so what we support today in terms of data sources is uh, REST. So you can link into your REST APIs. We're going to add more in the future, but this is where the, if you have like, um, Swagger. I mentioned in one of the chats, a uh, Swagger. Yeah. Uh, API over like uh, ASP.NET Core app or a Java app will ingest all those post gets puts etc and auto generate all your data access code but these are all um, uh, basically uh, rest files so this is a rest file in the cloud and I linked it into app builder and now I have access to it this one's called uh, test webinar link so if I go here or let me go to my pages I will add a new child view and we'll just call this test grid like so. Whoops, let me close this out. Um, control E, I think, George, for everything. Let me add a grid here. I'll just make this grid bigger. I'll go to my data, test webinar link, customers table. I can set my primary key, customer ID. And as George was showing, I can just go ahead and add a few um, properties. So all of a sudden, all this stuff is getting added to my grid. And now when I preview this screen, I've got all that live data with my grid, all the grid columns defined and all of the um, code needed for data access to subscribe to this. My data service will be enabled, et cetera. So yeah, you can connect into um, your, your REST data sources in the cloud and, and we'll do all the data binding for you. Um, yeah, there is some uh, authentication in there for REST uh, services. I'm not familiar fill with J, uh, JWT, but you could just try it out. I mean, all you got to do is log in, hit the plus sign. Oh, I'm sorry. Go to data, <laughs> hit the plus sign, REST API, and add your URL. And, and then you'll just go through it. it. It literally takes less than a minute to try this out. Um, yeah. And, and, and again, this is our, our switcher here. So for React, a React will show up here in Q1. Um, web components will show up first, but it doesn't matter. You design an app and uh, create all your screens, do all your layout, um, add all your navigation, uh, do all your um, themes and appearance, and then you decide that I'm going to just generate this, uh, this code later. So let's see. Uh, that one's done. That one's done. I think we're good there. No more questions. Let me jump over to the slides. I just got one last slide here. Our next session will be December 15th. We're going to do an update to App Builder this Friday. And then uh, probably by the 15th, I think we'll do another update. Um, so there'll be a couple new features, but the big thing coming is an Electron version of this. So you can install a desktop version of this product. It's still not gonna connect to local data sources, but you'll have an icon on the bottom. It won't get lost in the sea of tabs in your browser. It'll be a better dev experience. And then there's some other nice UX features that they're working on. Um, uh, so that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about in the December 15th session. The next webinar will be in January. So look to the second week of January and we will do a, um, a uh, webinar then with all the new features uh, because that's a uh, solid six weeks away and there'll be more stuff to come. Even with the holidays, we're working hard on getting this, uh, all this RTM and out the door. One thing I did notice in the chat, um, uh, uh, let's see, Terry asked about uh, doing SQL Server and tutorials and whatnot. So if there's stuff that you'd like to see in terms of tutorials, like even what George just showed today, 
Um, we do have docs, but shoot, shoot me an email, post it on Discord uh, and say, hey, I'd like to see a tutorial on this. It would be nice. So keep us in the loop on what you're thinking in terms of how we can help you uh, be more productive in building your apps and of course features as well. Loud and clear on the data access stuff. A lot of folks have been lately been asking for data access, direct connect, all this other stuff. So that's an area that um, we're going to continue to work on, but we have data access in there now. It'll just, it'll just continue to get better. So with that, looks like we have no more questions and no more chat. So I want to thank everyone. Enjoy um, uh, the rest of the week. And uh, thank you again, George. I really appreciate you joining us today. It was a great demo. Thanks, everyone. Yep, we'll see it. Bye-bye.